Hey, hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from My Stand Gamers, and welcome. So today we're taking a look at another really cool ship from the Steam Workshop. Now, this is the Argus Battle Cruiser. You might recognise it from Stellaris. Now, I'm not going to pretend that I know too much about that particular game, but I just wanted to have a look at this ship and just admire the beauty in its craft and its creation, how it's been sculpted, how the blocks that we have available to us in Space Engineers. Now, the first off, I'm going to say it is not your usual format in ships for Space Engineers. It's, it's a, another vertical ship. So all of the interior is vertically placed. The idea of it is to fly around like so. So you can see the thruster pack on the back, nicely illuminated with some lights. But let's actually have a look at it. We'll go from front to rear. That is a little bit different with this sort of ship. So having a look right slap bang in the centre, we actually have all these doors. Now you'd be wrong to think this was some sort of docking bay. Maybe maybe it's an Independence Day start or docking bay. You can see we've actually got missile turrets in there as well. So that is pretty cool. A nice volley of missile fire coming straight from the center right at the enemy. Now working our way down the side here, you can see we've got Gatling guns, missile turrets, and other Gatling guns. We've also got a bit of a sprinkling of interior turrets. That's always quite important. But you can see how the shell of this ship's been sculpted down into this area. And there's been some detailed areas added. And this is something I always say when we're looking at builds, is changing the color of the whole ship. So you've got varying color tones of the same gray. So you've got grays, a lighter gray, and a darker gray in some areas. It just really breaks the sort of tone of the ship up. And from a distance, it just really makes it pop to the eye. So you can see as we work our way down here, so this is the central hub area of the ship. You can see we've got some antennas located on in this area. We've got the blue ominous sort of lighting over there and of course it does match on all sides so it is quite pleasing to look at it from the front there and as we work our way down the leg you can see how it starts to curve down like so you can see there's a little bit of striping going on with the paintwork and it leads us to the tip here with a missile turret on the end of course there's gatling turrets there now having a design like this means that you can actually have more weapons on target than a traditional ship and because of that means pretty much every weapon on the ship can target straight forward as you're engaging combine this with some blocks on the end of here some decoy blocks and a bit of a spinning motion and you can end up with a ship that can cause quite a bit of damage so let's have a look around the back here so as we come around the back you'll notice this ship is only equipped to go in space so we've got iron thrusters iron thrusters ain't the best thrust we know that in space engineers but they are cheap and cheerful they don't pull a massive amount of hydrogen hydrogen is great and all but with these you can just cruise around as long as you've got batteries or some sort of power source a little bit more light in here you can see these glass enclosures to create almost these cool sort of thruster type bays and at the back here we've got various connector slots so you can see at the back we've got some extra protection from interior turrets in case anyone comes docking in and you don't want them to <laughs> You can see we've got the piston here, so this is like a little airlock. You can see the camera located there to protect you and thrusters above. It would be a little bit hard to dock this to some stations. You can see we've also got a larger airlock here. So this airlock is actually automated. So let's bring ourselves into position and see if it's automated. There we go. You see it started to begin flashing. Oh, awesome. So the interior in this ship is pretty damn cool for a vertical design. So it's sealing up behind us. You can see these doors on either side are also locked as well. So there we go. We've activated them with green. And we'll make our way inside. So here is the command bridge. So it's only a blast door away from the exit there. A little bit of a risk. But they said it's it's not really designed for survival. This It can be used in survival. It's got everything on board that you need. But it's more of a fun ship to have a play around with. So you can see the command bridge there labeled nicely. I love ships that are labeled. It's not so great when uh, someone comes aboard and they're easy to they're, they're able to find the way around really easy. But it's great for someone new aboard your ship. So you can see we've got quick access to the internals here. And this is crucial, especially in survival mode when you come up to repairing. Sometimes it could be as simple as a pipe can get damaged. It can even get shot up through the armor. But being able to get back in here... You can see we've got this tucked in thrust design so they don't burn each other, but they're able to thrust. I'm seeing more and more of this on ships, and it's really important to do this because you'll protect your thrusters. Thrusters on the outside are just easy targets. If you can get them tucked away in a compact internal thruster package, you're doing a great job. So let's continue working our way down vertically. There is a smaller area at the top that we'll have a look at as well, but you can see there's more suit access. The cool little interior, lots of little catways being used. So over here we've got another maintenance access hatch, a little 
dining area where you can request a can cola or maybe they should, they should definitely put some food items in even if it doesn't do too much but replenish health it'd be cool to see so as we enter into access once again we can see that we've got lots of different components in here that could be easily accessed for repair nice to have an access tunnel it's better than being sealed off and there we've got the medical room on that side just there very cool indeed so let's continue working our way down. So of course we've got a store in this section, locker access, a few plants just to liven up the area. It's a very industrial-esque interior this. And then we've got another maintenance on that side that'll take us into the same area. But let's continue working our way down. So we've got these little lounge areas in this section and a little stairway that takes you into these compact bunking areas. Very cool indeed. And you see it also wraps around and takes you up that staircase there. Well, you can't go from this way. Very cool indeed. I like to see this. They've used the space very well. It does feel very cramped, but the industrial sort of interior is really coming through in this design. It's very, very vertical looking. Lots of high ceilings and stairways. So we've got some tower blocks active there. We've got some more storage and we continue working down to the storage bay. Let's quickly pop this open and have a look in here. So this leads us to the rear airlock, the lower portion with the extending piston. And of course that's sealing up behind us. That's a great thing to do because Aaron always leaves his airlocks open. And as we come down to this section, you can see we've got the cargo, more maintenance, just what you need to fix things up, especially when they're broken. I'm not seeing any welders in these sections, so there's no automated welding system. We've got a projector block there that kind of project itself if it does need fixing up. And we've got another maintenance access over here. So a really cool ship. Let's head back to the bridge and we'll have a look around. But first of all, I do want to have a quick look in these top sections and just see if they are thruster housing. Okay, so it is just thrust housing. The idea of this ship is a very agile ship indeed. So let's test that out. Let's get to the bridge and see if that's the case. So as we jump into here, I'm guessing this is going to be the main seat. We've got cameras for rocket pods. Let's test them out. Okay, nothing indeed on the rocket pods just yet. We require missiles. Okay, let's have a look here. Oh yeah, we've got a safety on the missiles, that's why. Okay, I didn't want to blast the doors off, so there we've got forward firing missile, quick barrage. Let's have a look at our maneuverability. Not great acceleration, but we have got great turnability. We can rotate. And it's important to remember that we've got all the weapons possible on target when we do engage. Let's access the tower block again, so that'll seal up the weapons pods and stop them from shooting. Let's have a quick look at some of these other menus, what we've got. Well, that's turrets on and off. We've got window barricade, so I'm guessing if I go in first person and I activate number six... Yeah, that seals up that barricade behind me, protecting the commander and his crew in this compartment. Let's get another acceleration on and see how fast this thing can turn. But just the way a vertical ship moves through the environment is it's awesome to see from a distance. It's always a little bit unpredictable. To finish this design off and probably take it into survival mode, I'd probably have a look at these cavities, see if they can be reinforced. Uh, maybe add some decoy blocks into the extent of the uh, cavities and have a little bit of luck if we can do anything more with the gyroscopes so we can get a good rotation that would work as a decoy system. But overall, a really nice looking ship. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section below and what you feel about vertical ship designs or do you prefer a standard looking ship and configuration. Anyway, let's thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.